Hey, Grace and Truth, for the four of you that care, no, actually, I've gotten a lot of requests to take you on a tour through my bookshelf, so we're going to do this uh, lightning speed here, but I'll kind of give you the, the grand tour. This is, my, uh, this is my area to play right here. Now, up there in the top corner as you come in, um, you got, you know, whatever, DVDs, CDs, and then it's music from there on out. So that's, uh, you know, song books, get the, whatever, the Billy Joel, the uh, uh, ultimate guitar compendium thing, whatever. Uh, then these are my old um, jazz tunes from back in those days. And then we got some hymnals. Ooh, harmonica for dummies. There you go. This is a great book right here. This is your brain on music. Fascinating read. You should check that out at some point if you are interested in what music does physiologically to you. Uh, then we get into my favorite section, which is the Bibles. A bunch of different Bible translations. Um, I've got two of these because somebody left one here. So if anybody wants a... New American Standard Keyword Study Bible. It's a, that's a good one. I like that. Uh, I'll leave that there for whoever, whoever is going to pick that up. Um, let's see. These are my typical preaching Bibles here. So this is my New American Standard Preaching Bible. This is the one you'll see me with on a Sunday morning most of the time. Uh, the rest of the time, mostly, if it's not that one, it'll be this uh, ESV here. I love this. This is what's called an Allen Bible goat skin cover. You just like, I just want a pillow made out of that. Three bookmarks, nice wide margins, single column cross reference, dual column text. You can totally geek out over Bibles like this. So my, uh, my Allen Bible is one of my all time favorites. Um, let's see what else we've got here. This one's cool. This is called the story. Um, this is the NIV text and ESV puts one out also, but basically you can see what it does is it takes away all the chapter and verse divisions. So you just sit down and read the Bible like you're reading a book, and since you're not tracking your progress, you end up um, kind of going through it a lot faster than you would otherwise. So it's just kind of nice to sit in a lawn chair on a sunny day and read through the Bible uh, with just the text. So that's called the story. That's the NIV version. Um, the ESV is at home. I never, I never brought that one here. I don't know why. Anyway, this is a bunch of stuff nobody cares about there, a bunch of language stuff. Here we have Bibles in other languages. So, you know, this is, this is like uh, Greek here, and then the NRSV translation and the NIV translation with the Greek in the middle. So you can kind of see, you know, how they're translating different words from the Greek and the New Testament and so on. Um, this one, if you've never been familiar with the um, Septuagint, this is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. So Jesus and the apostles would have been familiar with this. So this is the Old Testament in Greek and then with English over here. So you can kind of see what, uh, you know, what's going on there as far as translations go. So that's fun. Um, other language Bibles, just random stuff that I've picked up over the years. This is in Georgian. I have no idea how to read this and I never will, but that's pretty cool, right? Beautiful looking language Georgian is. We got, uh, I don't know why I have three Spanish Bibles. I'm not sure I need all of that. I got one in French, uh, Hebrew Old Testament. This one's great. A Syriac Bible. Look at this bad boy. It looks like Arabic. It's not. It's, it's Syriac. So some of the earliest um, church fathers that we have and some of the earliest theological documents that we have are written in Syriac. Okay? And so this is the, the Bible that they were, um, that they were reading and, and kind of looking into. So I can't wait to kind of figure out how to make heads or tails of that. That'll be fun. Um... Yeah, so that's, you know, various Bibles, various languages. Some of them I can make heads or tails of, some of them not so much, and we'll get there over time. Now, I've got a flow to my shelf from here. you got Bibles and stuff, uh, and then I've got the heresy shelf, which leads into um, evangelism, which leads into, uh, no, heresy leads into apologetics, leads into evangelism, leads into missions, all right? Now, some of these are out of order. But pretty much in your heresy shelf, this is just the, the shelf of everything that's, that's wrong. So, you know, I've got, uh, I've got the Quran here, different sacred scriptures, Book of Mormon and the, the uh, Doctrine and Covenants of Pearl of Great Price from the Mormons. Um, this, is, this is actually a training manual for Mormon missionaries. So, uh, that's been, I don't know where I got that, but that's interesting to read. Gives you a whole different picture of Jesus, that book does. Um, kind of a, the, the standard Mormon systematic theology here from Talmadge. This guy, okay, if anybody ever tells you that uh, uh, for the Freemasons are not a cult, then just check this out. This is called The Morals and Dogmas. i got a bookmark in here. I wonder what this says. 
Yeah, so here he's reinterpreting the, um, what each tribe of Israel means and is there for. And then he, uh, let's see, the ram, the domicile of the god Mars, chief in the celestial soldiery of the 12 signs and the device of Gad, whom Jacob characterized as a warrior, chief of his army, psycho. All right, so this is the, the core document, the Bible of the Freemason world. So that gets, that gets pretty trippy. Uh, what else is on my old heresy shelf here? 23 minutes in hell, never bought that. The secret, the secret. If you ever want to know what Oprah believes, the secret. That's the book that she pushed a lot. L. Ron Hubbard here, the founder of Scientology, I got that. I like this one. This one's good. I met this guy in Africa, and he wrote um, a book about how, how God wants you to get rich. So he calls it the Floodgates Code, and um, he gave it to me as a personal gift. There's my guy there. Um, and I looked at it and kind of read part of it on the road and said, thanks. I don't know why I still have it. Oh, look at this. I just opened randomly. Poor billionaires. You might be a poor billionaire. He'd be happy to explain it to you. All right. So that's the heresy shelf. Hinduism for dummies and so on. Um, a biography of Mary Baker Eddy. Got some stuff on Hinduism here. Um, ah, the Zodiac. Yeah, horoscopes and all that. I would recommend just skipping the book and listening to the Weird Al Yankovic song about horoscopes. Hysterical. It's, it's well worth the, the four-minute investment, and uh, it'll be more helpful to you than that book. So anyway, look, I read this stuff so that you guys don't have to, right? Like, you got to... Um, if you're going to defend the faith, then sometimes you got to know what you're defending it from. And so I don't spend a lot of time in this, but it's, it's worth engaging. Um, that takes us into evangelism. Got some good old, you know, Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron here. Uh, that's, look at that beast. The School of Biblical Evangelism. ka uh, This is our giveaway book out here, Sharing Jesus Without Freaking Out. That's a, that's a good one. Got some Greg Kalkel, Kokel, however you say that. Um, not all of this is good. Speaking of, we'll get rid of that one. Um, you know, Robert Coleman, here you go. The Master's Way of Personal Evangelism. This is kind of the, the, the timeless classic evangelism book. If you want to just read one book on evangelism, most guys in the last 30 years would say, hey, pick up some Coleman, and that's good. Get some Ravi, Ravi Zacharias over there. Yeah, Bill Hybel is good enough. Yeah, whatever. So there you go. There's, uh, the, the, the idea here is that we start with the Bible, and then, as people you know, enter this office with heresy, maybe we can do some apologetics and engage, the, the, uh, engage their ideas with the truth of Scripture. And in doing that, we'll lead them into evangelism and then missiology, where we release them into the field. It's a very optimistic setup for my bookshelf uh, that I've got here. Discipleship stuff, these are counseling materials. This stuff down here, this is like my philosophy section, kind of. You got some John Locke, you got some... Uh, yeah, Personal Ethics by Carl F.H. Henry, some of that kind of stuff. Got some fiction over there. So, yeah, I don't spend a whole lot of time down on that shelf, but uh, every now and then, actually, come to think of it, there's other philosophy stuff scattered throughout here. Most of, see, most of the philosophy stuff I get is on Kindle because I never sit down and really just, like, read a philosophy book. It's always stuff that I'm chipping away at on the iPad or something, so most of that doesn't make it into hard copy. So, next comes my favorite section of the bookshelf, uh, systematics, okay? So you got like systematic theologies. What a systematic theology will do is break down different um, portions of Christian doctrine and then just explain it from a biblical perspective. So this is, uh, John MacArthur just put this one out and it's like really good. I've been really impressed with it so far. You know, what, what does the Bible say about creation? What does the Bible say about uh, scripture. What does the Bible say about God the Son? What does the Bible say about the glorified Christ? You know, and then you just go through and read what he's got to say. When you see something like this, just so you know, don't get intimidated. You're not supposed to read all the way through this thing, okay? You're supposed to go to the section you need, reference it, get what you need out of it, and then put it back on the shelf. Systematic theology. Love those things. Different guys write different ones. You know, you got John Frame up there. Uh, he's good. John Frame did a whole it's not really a systematic theology. It's an exposition of the doctrine of God. Just who is God? That's a really cool one. Um, you got systematic theologies that are more philosophically based, like Erickson, more ecclesiologically based, like Aiken here. Uh, Grudem is sort of the industry standard. If you're looking for one systematic theology book, get you some Wayne Grudem, and that will serve you well. Um, Chafer, kind of, you know, old classic standard, not as good as some of the others, but solid as a rock 
for the most part. And then, yeah, just various. This one's cool. This is a big scary book right here. So D.A. Carson and uh, Greg Beal, they went through the New Testament and pulled out every reference to the Old Testament in the New Testament. So if you want to know how Hebrews 1 talks about Psalm 110 or how John 3 talks about Ezekiel 36 or whatever, then you just go here and the commentary on the New Testament's use of the Old Testament by Carson and Beale gets you all hooked up. That is a fun, fun read. More systematics over here. This is a cool one. Um, I, I can't give you the whole history right now, but The Fundamentals, all right? The Fundamentals by R.A. Torrey, edited by R.A. Torrey. What happened was, um, in the late 1800s, there were, uh, you know, kind of theological liberalism kind of started to really be on the rise. And so R.A. Torrey and some of these guys said, you know what we need to do? We need to just decide, we need to decide what, are, what core doctrines we're going to center around. What are the fundamentals of the faith? We'll publish them, and then we're going to send a copy of this to every pastor in the country. That was the goal, and for free. And so they had underwriters that were sponsoring them and everything. So 1917, they come out with the fundamentals, and this gives rise to the fundamentalist movement, uh, which protected a lot of doctrine. We know fundamentalism is kind of you know old and cranky, and it branched off in some of those directions. But this was a foundational work that we all kind of stand on its uh, on R.A. Torrey's shoulders there, whether we know it or not. So let's see. Next is my favorite section of <laughs> of the bookshelf, which is history. We got biographies, we got church history, we got uh, Philip Schaff here. I just pick these up one at a time as I get them. I think there's like twelve of those volumes. Um, you know, some archaeology, history of the Jewish people. Got some Josephus down here. Um, yeah, if I could recommend one church history book. Let's see. It would probably be... Where did you go, Justo Gonzalez? There's volume two. Volume one. I might have brought it home or something. But the, the story of Christianity, especially volume one by Justo Gonzalez, that's a good, solid book on church history that's easy to read. Um, nice concise chunks there, and uh, it'll it'll get you started. So, uh, so that's history. Love me some history. Now, after history comes my favorite section of the bookshelf, uh, which is languages. Now, I, I gotta I gotta have a disclaimer here. You know, some people are gonna be thinking, "My goodness, do you know all these languages?" You don't really have to. So this goes from Greek into Spanish into modern Hebrew. Most of my ancient Hebrew stuff is over there because uh, for for school. Um, French, Ugaritic, Syriac, and Aramaic. Now, let me give you an example of how you can cheat learning languages, all right? You spend your time learning Biblical Hebrew, for example, and then once you are proficient in Hebrew, then Aramaic is a close sister language. It's kind of like Spanish and Portuguese. And a lot of shared vocabulary, a lot of shared grammar, stuff like that, so that's easy to pick up. Once you got some Aramaic down, then Syriac is actually just a dialect of Aramaic. So you learn a new, you spend a couple hours learning a new alphabet and some new rules, and bam, you are able to make heads or tails of a Syriac Bible. Ugaritic, it's a weird language, right? Ugaritic, I even get a DVD for that one. But this is like, um, this is a language that was uh, in and around Israel at the time that they were uh, kind of in the days of Joshua. So there was a lot of influence there. Again, very similar to Hebrew. So if you got some Hebrew and then that leads to Aramaic and Syriac, you can pick up some Ugaritic and kind of mess around with that. So it's really not as impressive as it, as it would sound if somebody's like, yes, I have studied all of these languages. Um, you can sort of, you know, cheat. And I highly recommend it because actually I'm pretty darn lazy. Um, after the language section, let's see, this is like general ecclesiology. This, not a whole lot of, I don't know, some of this stuff is like, some of it's helpful and some of it's just completely not. So I don't spend a whole lot of time in that section. Most of these books are things that I have been given by somebody, like, you know, in a seminary class or something. Like, oh, you got to read this book. So, you know, like, here you go. What's this one? I've never even read this. Growth by Accident, Death by Planning. Probably not going to spend a lot of time reading that one. Uh, you know, there, there's stuff like that, how to run a church, basically. Again, some of it's good. Some of it, like, pass the test and, and move on. Got a section on preaching. Got some good old-fashioned, you know, Haddon Robinson there. A little, uh, little Keller. Oh, I got two copies of Keller. Look at that. I got uh, some, some MacArthur on preaching. Stuff like that. Then, then we get into my favorite section of the bookshelf. My favorite section of the bookshelf is the ladder. No, I'm kidding. Um, 
is uh, commentaries, all right? So, well, let me pause. Up here, this is pretty much a whole shelf of Charles Spurgeon. Somebody gave me those. So these are just all Spurgeon sermons that are transcribed, except that, that's a set of something else. But um, yeah, most of this is just sermons from Charles Spurgeon, who, uh, you know, just he's the prince of preachers, right? So you gotta, you gotta read you some Spurgeon. But then we get into commentaries, and that's what most of this is. So these are commentaries based on different books of the Bible. This right here, these four, that's Romans by Donald Gray Barnhouse. Timeless classic. Um, you know, Romans by Sproul right there. A lot more succinct, as you can see. Uh, this is John, the, the Gospel of John. So when I was preaching through John, I would spend some time reading these transcribed sermons from uh, uh, James Montgomery Boyce and, um, you know, just other stuff on the book of John and, and so on. So those, um, those commentaries are really useful, especially when you're preaching through the books. Um, down here are commentaries that I'm working on. So Ten Commandments series, bam, Song of Solomon right there doing that coming up soon. I got Luke. Luke takes a lot of study. Luke is, there's just a lot there. So a lot of that. Um, I picked up this set of commentaries on the whole Bible for like nothing. So there you go. And then this is my um, uh, section of books that I'm supposed to read. So <laughs> those are like, got to get to them at some point. Uh, some of those people gave to me to read and some of them is just like, man, I really got to see what's in there again. So um, yeah, that's, that's the to-do list. These are cool. These are like various... Um, you know, stories or sermon illustrations or something, like Tony Evans. This is my guy right here. So this is just a book of a bunch of sermon illustrations that he has used. And so sometimes on a Sunday morning, you'll hear me say, you know, Tony Evans once said about marriage, well, boom, he's got a section on marriage. So there you go. Anyway, little uh, little cheats there. I, I don't think of everything that I teach you guys. You know, it's <laughs> it's uh, I, I have very few original ideas, actually. A lot of it, a lot of this job is uh, just like the job of a preacher is just to take in a lot of information and then pass along the most helpful stuff to you guys. So, um, yeah, I don't just sit around and think this stuff up. Oh, we forgot my favorite section of this uh, bookshelf, which is general theology. Now, this is just fun. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's a lot of, of not good stuff in here. Um, you know, so you get you some Lee Strobel. All right, good to go. Yeah, so this Lee Strobel stuff I should probably put over there. But you get things like, um, uh, you know, the authority of the Old Testament. Like that's, this, John Bright, actually, I got to read this one again. That's just a good, timeless classic. Can you trust the Old Testament? Is it a, a an authoritative and reliable expression of God's word? So, yeah, I got to read that one again. Um, you know, you get stuff down here like the, the church or the, the temple and the church's mission. That'll just unfold the theology of the temple um, and what the church is supposed to do with the truths that God proclaimed by setting up the temple system. All right, so that's, uh, that's important stuff. Pretty obscure, but also important. This is a good one for anybody, whether you like Calvin or not. A, a little book on the Christian life. Great deal there. Uh, you know, so just general theology. Some of it's garbage. You know, I got end times prophecy stuff up here that has already come and gone as far as their predictions go. I got... Uh, um, you know, right next to so right next to the preacher's catechism by Allen, which is really good, is um, this book, which is like by another Allen actually. Look at that, which is um, kind of cracking the code of Genesis forty nine or something. You know, this is the kind of guy that like he's really smart, and he's like, you don't understand the Bible until you understand what I'm about to tell you, which nobody's ever heard before. So a lot of this stuff you can pretty much write off, except that it's really really interesting to interact with some of this stuff. You know, biblical numerology over here, cracking the Bible code. Yeah, look at that. So you can count letters and add up numbers and get a certain, like, hidden message out of, <laughs> out of the Bible. You know, most people should ignore stuff like that. But again, I read this stuff so that you guys don't have to. Because at some point, somebody's going to come into my office and be like, as they have, you know, and like, hey, have you seen this cracking the Bible code book? And I'm going to be like, let me tell you what's in there. And I probably need to know it better than other people so that I can steer them towards the truth. Um, yeah, we got stuff here on how we got our Bible. You know, a little bit of uh, Michael Kruger. That's always good. Um, just general theology stuff. Here you go. I had three copies of this book for some reason. And I, hey, look, that one's signed by David Jeremiah, by the author. Check that out. All right, this is a giveaway. If you want to read God Loves You by David Jeremiah, good, dependable, solid pastor, uh, and a good book, actually. If, 
If you want to read this, it's yours. Come and get it. First come, first serve. So yeah, that's pretty much the bookshelf. These, uh, these little bookend deals here were made for me by somebody. So that was, that was a fun gift that I appreciated very much. Um, this up here is the early church fathers from about the time of the death of the apostle John until about 800 AD. So all the, all the uh, collected writings of the early church fathers are up there. So when I say, you know, well, Cyprian said this or whatever, like we actually have the primary sources right there. So we can go and do that. This is um, transcribed sermons from Martin Lloyd-Jones on the book of Ephesians. That is a deep, deep well right there. So anyway, that's um, as far as hard copies go, there's a bunch more. Uh, there's a whole different library on Kindle. Uh, and then there's a whole different library in my Bible software that I get to use and things like that. But as far as hard copies, this is pretty much um, the playground and where I live. And as you have gathered, almost every section on this uh, bookshelf is my favorite section. So uh, if there's anything that uh, you need any book recommendations, you got questions about what to get on certain subjects or certain veins of the faith, let me know. If you need to borrow something, holler at me. This is basically like community property. So I want to equip you guys however I can and let me know if I can help. Thanks for watching.